Good morning, Decatur 101. This is Gregory White with the City of Decatur. I am currently the director of our Active Living Division. I've been in the city for 27 wonderful years. Today, I'm going to give you a wonderful tour of the Epster Recreation Community, which is better known as the bottom. Currently, right where I'm standing, I just want to give you a quick history. Decatur was founded in 1823, and in 1833, there were about 1,699 slaves in the community and 17 free people of color. So I just want to let you know where we're standing today, right behind me, if you look at the town hall, homes behind me, that was where the first Antioch AME church used to stand on that hill, and that came about in 1868. Now, that's why I wanted to start here in front of Epsha Recreation Center and the City Schools of Decatur. So the free slaves started here, and when they moved here to the bottom, they were very business-minded. There were a lot of businesses here. There were flower shops. There were even, back then, there was uh, community stores. There were laundromats. All that was thriving here. So we're gonna walk over now to where you can see our new recreation center. This is Epsha Recreation Center. I'm really so proud of all of this. This is the site where the original African-American school was, Heron Street, Beacon Elementary, and Trinity High School were located on this site. It's really unique. It's, really a part of this construction. This is the original brick wall, a part of the building, which used to be the Epster gym, which actually was uh, known as the Matchbox. And it was a little small gym for African-Americans to play in with a small, real low uh, trajectory roof. So we're gonna walk up the street and I'm gonna show you our historical Beacon uh, Hill street toppers. Mrs. Wilson was one of the key individuals behind this and Linda Harris. And I worked on the project, as you can see, this is the corner of Electric and Trinity Place. At the top, there's the Beacon Hill Street Topper. We were so excited to capture that. So we did this about a year and a half ago. So this is an exciting project to work on. And some of these streets are currently still here. They were here back in the 30s, but some of the streets have now uh, vanished at this point. But we're gonna walk over to our gym. This is one of the last pieces that's a remaining from the school. This is the original doorway of the uh, Heron Street School. So this is a historical entrance and we were able to save this. It's really just savvy on the city's part as far as historical piece for the city. As we enter this historic doorway, we're gonna walk into what I call the first phase of the museum. And as you look straight ahead, it's really creative how the city was able to capture the picture on the entrance. That's the original Heron Street School. As you look um, around, we, the, we did a really good job, I think, from a city standpoint. We have a timeline here, uh, basically from the 1830s all the way to 2010. This is an original map of some of the original streets in the community, which is better known as the bottom in Beacon Hill. And the name Beacon Hill came about, some people say, how did that name come about? But the students were real clever with that name, uh, Beacon Hill, and Beacon was a, they wanted to be beacons of light for society. So this is one phase of the facility. I told somebody many years ago, this was the entranceway and where I'm currently standing, there used to be two restrooms here. So all this was renovated in 2015. So we're gonna get ready to walk into the uh, gym. Uh, let's let you see the gym area. As we enter to this, well, I say a historical facility now, so I told somebody many years ago, the little gym didn't look like this. This is a renovated gym. The little gym was basically known as the Matchbox. And it was pretty much the length of, uh, it, ran, it ran pretty much horizontal. It, just, it was not the, a full basketball court at that time. It was just a little small gym, wasn't even regulation size. But as you can see in the building, we got some historical banners. This is 50, 1955, the Hammond Street Bulldogs football team. In 1965, the football team won the state championship, and on that team were two great players, Jack Pitts, and then on this team also was Clarence Scott, who went on to play uh, for the Cleveland Browns, drafted in the first round, played for the Cleveland Browns for 17 seasons. But in this gym, we're so excited to have a full gym, uh, especially from a recreation standpoint, an active living standpoint. There's basketball in here, there's free play, there's badminton in here, we play pickleball in here. Uh, we rent this gym out. There's been family reunions. People have rented out. There's been black history programs. There's been a Better Together. Uh, we talk about race and equity. All these types of events have been hosted in this facility. So as we walk over to these banners, you talk about my African-Americans have made a big contribution to this community. The city of Decay is a great place. And I just wanted to point out this piece. 
In the picture number 52 is Richard Wilson, was the first African-American. I talked about the Matchbox gym. He was shooting in that gym uh, with a low ceiling, and he was the first African-American to play at Decatur High School, and he had a little low trajectory shot. This jersey, number 52, is actually a retired jersey, but all the relatives wore that jersey as they played uh, over at the Decatur High School. So we're gonna walk through. We're gonna walk through the other end of the building. This is the main lobby of the Epson Recreation Center. It's really great to see how we captured a lot of this. As you can see, some of the wording on the walls, pride is unity. I love the wonderful pictures. These are some pictures that were captured when the historical project was being captured. Just want you to get a feel. That was a great sense of community here. Uh, just want to let you see the student body. We have a yearbook of the old Trinity High School that was here on the property. This was wonderful to capture. And right here, just some historical figures throughout the community. You know, there's Clarence Scott, there's all type of, there's uh, Charles Johnson, there's Mason Johnson, there's Cynthia Houston on the picture. So all these people made great contributions in the community. So I just want to point out also, when we talk about two wonderful people that were, I think were great here in our community, was Clarence Scott and Jack Pitts. Uh, like I said, the team won state championship in 1965. But in 1965, you know what was going on in this country in 1965. But in 2013, I want to commend Decatur High School and Carter Wilson. They brought the whole 1965 Bulldogs team back, those who were living, and presented the team uh, state championship rings in 2013. Go Decatur Bulldogs. Just one other historical fact I just wanted to share. I mentioned to you how this was a thriving business community and the first business owner in the community was Henry Oliver, who was a blacksmith here in the city. And he is buried in the Decatur Cemetery and it's really so wonderful to see about a year ago, we actually got a tombstone. So if you have visited the Decatur Cemetery, make sure you go to section six, which is the African-American section, and you will see a wonderful tombstone for Henry Oliver, the first business owner in the city of Decatur as a blacksmith. A little humor, Tom Steele was a community store and he used to do this little sandwich called a split, better known as a split sandwich, and it's based on a little sausage and mustard and bread. And people talk about how historical that is. And now, each uh, in August or September when they have Decatur Day, you see a lot of people over at McCord Park with the split sandwich, just sort of trying to keep a piece of the history alive. And this is the brochure which you can find online about all the history of African Americans here in the city of Decatur. And visit www.decaturga.com. Our center director here is Portia Langley. Uh, you can find Portia online. Portia is really creative. She works here, our athletic team, Stacy Green and her team, they work here. But I just say from, from Portia's standpoint, very community minded, trying to fill in the gaps. You know, they had a uh, summer food program here. We didn't have, summer, didn't have summer camp here this year because of the pandemic. We got real creative, Chick-fil-A provided right out here every day. I just want you to see this patio. Sometimes you think what's the patio's function but this patio serve uh, kids uh, Chick-fil-A sandwiches every day for free for the whole month of July. And a lot of kids in the community depend on summer camp and we commend Chick-fil-A for being a partner. And I would say Stacy Green, who actually works in this building, Stacy grew up in the community. Stacy runs our athletic program and our program for my athletics, it was a big field out back. We'll walk out there at the end of the tour, let you see the field, but on the field was lacrosse, that's flag football, that's soccer, just kids doing free play, that's sports camp. So we do a lot in this space. So we're gonna walk downstairs. Just wanna point out as we're walking down this stairwell, these banners right here that are streaming are some of the original streets that were in the community. And we're gonna exit outside just to the Beacon Hill Complex, our plaza area. And as we get ready to approach this beautiful space, I tell somebody it's great to see how this space was captured. It's an active space. We have some great information on historical things that happened in the community here. But this space has been also been used. We do bike classes here, teach you how to ride uh, what we call our tricycles here. Mrs. Hill, I want to commend her, but now we're in this time of year. But normally this is really beautiful how she's kept this garden out here. And also we have some beautiful flowers out here during the springtime. To my right is the actual school system, and we have the Epson Community Center here. Let's walk up this way. I want to show you how creative the city was as far as keeping some of the history of Heron Street School and Trinity High School. As I approach this stairwell, this is the only stairwell that survived the project, but this is the original stairwell of the school. 
I want you uh, just to understand you get a chance to walk here. Until tomorrow you walk these steps, you can feel, feel the history that was here in the building. And you can see these stairwells will take you to our gymnasium area. As we go down the stairwell, we're gonna go to the, I call it the, the historical plaza. As we look straight out, we have the capability on the plaza to show uh, actually a movie, the movie. Uh, a couple summers ago, we actually showed a, a movie here. Great to see how this space was used. So let's walk this way and look at some of the historic information that's out here. As you can see, you look around at the bridge, is actually the model. That's the model train station. Before, like I said, when Urban Renewal, before Urban Renewal was here, this was all houses. It was businesses here. When I mean, in the 30s, Urban Renewal came, a lot of things were bulldozed down. So, and this is Alan Wilson. It was one of the first housing projects, uh, units in the nation. Uh, it was in the city of Decatur. As you can see now, it's like how the city got created. You can see we had an artist that painted the bridge. Uh, told somebody they, they did a great job to bring the art, definitely bring some vibrancy in the community. Let's go walk this way. I know you, this is the police department. It's amazing how all these things are right here together. You have the EPSA Rec Center, school system, and the police department all right here together. So we'll walk down this way. I tell somebody you can walk here and you can see the timeline start from 1902 with the first public schools for African Americans in Decatur is established and later named Heron Street. As you can walk the timeline as we walk up from 1902. A lot of historical things have happened. 1962, Decatur Public Library was integrated. That was done by our former mayor, Mayor Elizabeth Wilson. We'll come on down. 65, 26 African American students integrated Decatur High School. 67, Trinity High School closes and students merge with Decatur High School. 72, Beacon Hill Elementary integrates and the school officially closes in 1977. 1977 is when Decatur, at that time was known as Decatur Recreation Center, actually came into the older building, which was a little gym and some few classrooms there. And I mentioned again to you, 2013, when the football team got their state rings. In 2014, you see where we arrived, this beautiful complex, which is Epsa Rec Center, City Schools of Decatur, and the Police Department. When you're doing your walking tour, I would love for you to come and see all these historical pieces here. But I really didn't think this one was really significant, not because of the year I was born, 1961. But 1961, uh, Jackie Robinson was, came to Decatur. He came here also as far as helping to, uh, when you say, to help with desegregation. Also about voter registration. So Jackie Robinson came and spoke at Thankful Baptist Church here in Decatur in 1961. I understand it was standing room only. And fortunately, someone had this wonderful picture of Jackie Robinson at Thankful Baptist Church. What a historical time. As you know, Jackie Robinson integrated baseball back in 1947. So what a historical moment. We talk about Epster, and I'm gonna tell you about why the building was named after Epster. So let's go find, in the midst of all this, all kind of great people out here. This is Donald Grant Epster. He was a deacon at uh, Thankful Baptist Church for over 40 years. Uh, prominent leader, uh, he was all about helping kids uh, be motivated. You can have dream, you can have possibilities. And I kept wondering, I said, all the great people that lived in this community, why did you all name the place after Deacon Epster? And then someone was saying, you know, his activism on as far as, he was really big on making sure everyone was registered to vote. Understand, if you came to your house at night, he would get everybody registered to vote. People would feed him and they would say, well, I'm gonna fill it out tomorrow. Deacon Epson said, no, you're gonna fill out the registration tonight. And he would stay till everyone in the house got registered. So as you look, I'm so proud of Deacon Epster, so proud of how the city captured uh, his legacy and then took some of us to come to work every day to do the type of work that we do. We stand on great shoulders of someone like Deacon Epster. And as I say, I invite you to come out here to uh, explore the plaza. And we'll take one other look. We'll just kind of take a snapshot look and let you see some of the amenities that we have here at Epster, at our Epster Field Playground and the swimming pool. And we are now standing at the point of our, what we call our Epster Field Playground and Swimming Pool. I told you about our field is uh, open uh, seven days a week. People playing out here, Decatur High School is out here, practicing soccer, 
We are here doing, uh, we're doing right now, we call our conditioning. And also we do uh, youth lacrosse out here. Uh, one of the things, you know, you talk about trying to be diverse in the city. At one point, you know, we try to protect and keep the fields looking really nice. But at the same time, we think about people in the community. Cab drivers called me one day to say, Mr. Gray, we'd like for you to keep the field open because we're in the cabs all day. We like to come out here and walk and stretch our legs. I like, got it, understood. So it's great to hear stories like that. You know, we're in the midst of, uh, right now, you wonder why the basketball goals are taken down. We normally have basketball rims here in the city, kids and basketball out here playing. We normally have an after school program that's down here playing. And I just like to point out playgrounds throughout the city. Uh, same time, our swimming pool, all this was renovated in 2015 along with the whole complex. And now we're able to host uh, competitive swim meets, eight lane swimming pool. We got lights on the pool now. And the beauty of this, I really like seeing kids from the community coming and also learning how to swim. So as you can see, this is an active space. Uh, Tosa Mata, just great that the city is able to capture this. And I says, I want to say congratulations to class uh, Decatur 101. Congratulations, graduate, learn as much as you can. Feel free to look us up online and continue to enjoy Decatur. Thank you.